they're so uncomfortable and I can never get to sleep because they're so bumpy. It's our first bumpy clouds. Get flatter clouds. Get our aeroplane with better suspension in it for when it's flying. Mm? Ian Ellen, this is an important topic and it's going places. CBBC at BBC. No, we're going to travel, it's not. Hey. Okay. <laughs> CBC at BBC to go again. Tell us why you do or do not want to ban travel. Hey, come up next is just some show. It's got a dog in it. It's not that great. It's top notch scoop. I'm in it, and you may be in it too. I am in it. Here's scoop. Run network. Right, Hacker, it's time we put up our new notice board. Yeah, too right. Don't stick around here. Go and get the paper. I'll have it up in a jiffy. Shouldn't take long. I'm sure Max will want me to cover this. We both know what he thinks of me. Yeah. You know, I value you highly as a footstool. <laughs> but as a reporter for the big story, well, I'm sorry, Digby, you are absolutely useless. But the caveman story, sir, I'm ideal for it. In fact, my trusty assistant here is a leading expert on primitive man. Sure am. And mutt, that's my sister! Uh, which brings me neatly to a much more important assignment for you. <laughs> my sister's birthday party. Oh, and as the party got star guests, sir, uh, Cheryl Cole, maybe, Simon Cowell, and you want me to cover the occasion for the paper? Fantastic! Um, not exactly. She called in a panic. Uh, the caterers are short-handed. And you've heard all about my cordon bleu cuisine? Uh, just the bleu part, uh, which is why you're just there to do the washing up. But I need a front-page splash. The only splash you're going to hear is the splash of the plates going into the water. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess this up. My sister is very, very important to me. <laughs> oh, budgies. I could always get her a card on the way over. Some nice flowers, maybe? So, Hacker, a real-life caveman coming back to life or doing the washing up because his editor told him to? What would any great reporter do in that situation? Have some smoky bacon crisp. Apart from that. The caveman. Exactly. To the scoop. Yeah. Need the loo. Why didn't you go before we left? I didn't need it then. Oh, oh. oh that's better. Big bear. 
what? I need to laugh, laugh. Well, you'll just have to cross your legs. Uh, 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 four of them. Just don't think about waterfalls. Or rivers. Or showers. Or ponds. Gentlemen, here in this cryogenic pod lies one of our ancestors. It looks like Max. Oh, Max is much more ugly. <laughs> Gentlemen, please. This man is 20,000 years old. Go down to your wrinkle cream. Forgive my assistant, Digby D. Digworth. The D stands for... Doodle Brain. <laughs> Delighted. Now, the unfreezing will be complete by five o'clock. It is a delicate procedure. If he's woken too early, he will be traumatised. Me too. I'll get really grumpy in the mornings if I haven't had enough sleep, don't I, Hacker? Yeah. In a matter of hours, my name, Professor Wolfgang Krinkelhoff and Hackenbach III, will be on everybody's lips around the world. What do you think of that? I think you stand a better chance if your name was Bob Smith. <laughs> Come, gentlemen. I want to show you is the chemical formula I'm using for his preservation. Time for a few snaps, eh, Hacker? Yeah. I've left me camera in the car. Look, you stay here and don't touch anything. OK. Did you touch those dials? No. Not even one sneaky little turn? No. Are you telling me the truth? No. Huh? Uh -oh. <laughs> you thought it out! Uh... One thing for sure isn't Max. No. No, Max has got to push your eyebrows. <sighs> right, we need to freeze it back again. Right, turn the dial. <laughs> Quick, hacker! Fan him! Make him cooler! Uh... Not working, blowing him. <laughs> you really should floss. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the front page to end all front pages. We shouldn't be freezing this caveman again. We should be interviewing him. We take you to hotel for interview, give you food and drink. <laughs> Sausages. <laughs> Ice cream. Pizza. Ah. It's working, Hacker. He's getting hungry. Me too. And me. Ah. Ooh. All right, stay calm, Digby. These are the sacrifices a top reporter has to make to get the front page. Now, what is your name? Oh. And how are we spelling that? Ah. Uh. Good, good. Uh, Digby, Digby. You're forgetting something. Of course. How old are you? No, not that. We're about to go outside and... It... Oh, oh, yeah. We need to be in con... In con... Incognito. Yes, that as well. Good boy. All clear. Don't ever suspect. Look at him. The height of sophistication. <clears throat> Do you mind? Shows he likes his food, Hacker. You like your food, don't you? <clears throat> I thought so. 
Come on, Hacker, we'll grab that interview while the professor's not around. Yeah. Ah, Mr. Digbeth. Professor. Oh. I see you bought a colleague. No. Uh, just me and Hacker. Uh, but, uh... Oh, oh br brought a colleague? Yes, yes, I, I, I did bring him. I, I brought along good old... Uh, Fred! Fred Flint! Oh, pleased to meet you, Fred. Uh, ah! How strong a hand, Mr. Flint! Yes, just out of college, junior reporter. They teach them to study everything very closely. Oh! Oh! And he's just been to the dentist. It's made him a bit light-headed. Uh, he looks um, a little familiar. Really? Yeah, maybe not. Well, I've got a caveman to bring back to life. See you at five o'clock, Mr. Digwell. That don't suit you. Come on. Right, let's get this shot. Scoop, here we come. Max, Digby. Am I glad you called? I'm on the verge of an amazing scoop. I'm staring at the greatest scientific discovery for centuries. <laughs> what? The world's biggest bottle of washing up liquid? Stop bubbling, Digby. You're supposed to be doing the dishes at my... She's just called and said you're not there. But I am here. Where? Here. Well, so you're not there? But I am here. Well, I know you're there, but you're not here. I mean, there. Look. If you're not my sisters in ten minutes, I will personally see to it that you lick every plate until it glows. You can think of worse things. I've forgotten all about the party, Hacker. Uh, there's only one thing for it. I think there's going to be an extra hand at Max's sister's bash. Can you sing Happy Birthday? Mm. Come on, Hacker. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Uh, 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 uh. That'll do. Mr. Digworth, thank you so much for agreeing to be my chief washer-upper. But, um, disaster has struck. The waiters have called in sick too. Fear not, Miss De Lacey. I'm a natural of the art of waitering. A master of elegance, balance and poise. Whoops. Right, let's get these nibbles sorted. Fred! No! They're for the guests! Hacker! Hacker! You can't. What do you look like? We're supposed to be the caterers, not putting people off their food. And I told you to keep an eye on Fred. Don't, I repeat, don't uh, let him eat any of this stuff. No, I repeat, no. Oh, you! Is um, everything ready, Mr Digworth? <laughs> it's perfect. Um, guests this way. As I was saying, my staff are highly trained, efficient, uh, and professional. Uh, Ronnie! Mildred! Leave them alone! Back, Fred! Back! Not them, the fish! Uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> he doesn't get out much. Come along, Fred, that fruit punch won't pour itself. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Mr. Digworth, what is he doing? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Lacey. He does get these artistic urges, you see. Come on. Well, your colleague's art does have a certain raw charm. Um, could you get some more snacks out for our guests, please? Coming right up. Hacker, keep your eyes open. OK. Uh, uh. Very nice. But do I? Really look like that. Yeah. Mm. Memo for story. Top reporter stops big fish caveman disaster. Digby! What is it, Hacker? Don't tell me that caveman's going nuts! He's going nuts. I told you not to tell me! Oh yeah. Uh... Ah! Brent, I told you the disco's not till this evening! Ah! He wants to take you to his cave. Tell him I'm not leaving words with Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's he saying now? He can hunt for food. Oh, what's wrong with the supermarket? Although, I can imagine Fred is a really good shot. Excuse me. Oh. Uh, Hello, Digby. Are you there? No, I'm here. Uh, Let's start that again. How are things going at my sister's birthday party? I can honestly say the party's going with a swing. Oh. Oh. The food's going down the tree. Oh, <laughs> Can I speak to my sister? Um, yeah. Here she is now, sir. <laughs> Phoebe, happy birthday. <laughs> she was screaming. No, sir. 
<laughs> She's singing. <laughs> singing? Yeah, we're playing musical charades and she was doing an Andrew Lloyd Webber. Anyway, must go. The, the vicar wants another cheesy football. Bye. <laughs> that was a close one. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, no, don't tell me he's run off with her. He's run off with her. I told you not to tell me! Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK. OK, we've got to get him back to the museum. <laughs> no! Hunting is strictly forbidden in Pilbury! <laughs> He's asking if there's a mammoth next door. No, it's my neighbour, Mrs Coolidge. Mr Digworth, can you do something? He is rather out of control. Don't worry, Mr Lacey, he's just a little highly strung. Bad caveman. I mean, caterer. You mustn't eat Mrs Coolidge. Come and have a cream horn instead. <laughs> he's making a fire for you. That's very... rugged. <laughs> he wants to cook for you. Oh! You know, I do like a man with a healthy appetite. Ugh. Wait a minute. That's it! Hacker, I think I've found a way to get him back to the museum. We tempt him back with food, but we're going to need some bait. No! That's all right, Hacker. You don't have to help me out here, but aren't you overdue a visit to the pooch parlour? Hmm? Yeah, there you go, sir. Have a look. <laughs> You win, babe. Good boy. I admire your manly practicality, but wouldn't it be easier to use a match? He's taking the bait, Hacker. Now lure him to the museum. Your dinner went that way. So you see, gentlemen, the cave man's preservation in a compound of formaldehyde and hydroxide has been crucial for his well-being. Ah, it's nearly five. Let us return to the podroom, my friends. It is time for the unfeasing. Well done, Hacker. Keep going. Podroom first on the right. No! <laughs> <laughs> No caveman! Clear sign of inferior intelligence. Not also is your deer skin robe, crudely stitched with a bone and needle, <laughs> and the ancient mobile phone. <laughs> but the most important thing of all, gentlemen, is to prove my big theory that the ancient man felt far less pain than we do today. I? I mean, uh, ooh! Watch as I prod him sharply with my forefinger. Nothing. 
Stop lean up chicken. Look. You can't eat a doggy. Oh God. Yeah, you didn't feel a thing, did you? Excellent. And you won't feel this either. In the name of evolution, what is this? Oh, it's my birthday, and I've had the best party ever. <laughs> Look, I have never seen her before in my life. It's OK, Professor. I'll get him back in the port. He speaks English. Right that down, he's a quick learner. Yeah. Steady now, Digby. He's wearing red. He's wearing red. Red, Digby. Red. Red! Ah. He's in. Turn the dial up to freezing. Yes! Excellent. Another successful day in the life of Digby D. Digworth. Uh, Digby. It's the name of... Professor Wolfgang Krinkelhoff and Hackenbach the third will live forever. Uh, 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 yes, I will marry you. <laughs> Oh, do wild man weds and sis. Dig, dig, dig. Hiya. Just wanted to let you know that if you love Sarah Jane and can't wait to see more of her adventures, then head on over to the CBBC website and check out her new online comic. Catch up with Sarah Jane, Luke, Rani and Clyde as they battle aliens and monsters from the far reaches of space. Go to bbc.co.uk slash cbbc, click on the Sarah Jane adventures and get involved. <laughs> Well, I've not got that all to do. Hey, I'm Ricky with your afternoon update. Let's not waste any time because I've been catching up with the stars of Harry Potter. Part one of The Deathly Hallows has its premiere tomorrow. So what's Rupert Grint doing now? Well, what's he going to do? Is he going to drive an ice cream? Well, it seems he might be. Well, we haven't got that right now, but we will get back to it. Although we're all about Harry Potter today, there is some other news we promised. Thousands of students are marching through London to protest over plans to charge £9,000 a year for going to university. And no one in America seems to know who launched this missile. It was filmed by a news helicopter in California, but military officials say it's nothing to do with them. Right. We'll have a lot more on Harry Potter over on the Newsround website. Make sure you go and have a look right now. I managed to speak to all of the stars, including, including Emma Watson, Rupert Grint, Daniel Radcliffe, all of them that are over on our website, so do take a look at that. I'll be back with a full roundup of all the very latest at 6.25. Hopefully, things will be smoothed out by then. See you then. Bye-bye. CBBC have an amazing new offer that is out of this world. Just text SJA to 80313 to join the adventure and get a free and exclusive Sarah Jane sound file for your phone, featuring the Doctor himself. Make sure your mobile can receive MMS messages and play MP3 files and always ask permission first. There's a limited number and only one per phone, so be quick. Nothing's going to make me miss this. Find the full terms and conditions in the help section on the CBBC website and download your special Sarah Jane sound file today. Hello, welcome back to the CBBC office where today we are banning travel. Ban it, don't I speak, have been don't wrong. speak. Uh, doesn't matter what he thinks, it matters what you lot think at home. We've got some emails here. 
First email's from Sophie. All right, Sophie, you well. Hi, Sophie. Who says, I think you should, uh, travel should be banned because I felt sick once when I was on a boat. Oh. That's the third worst type of travel sickness on a boat. What are the other ones? Second worst is on a plane. Yeah. And the worst type of travel sickness is when you're getting a collie bucky off someone. A what? A, a piggyback. Oh. You know, you're sick on their back. It's tragic. Horrible. Lovely. Next one here's from Yasmin. You are right, Yasmin? You smell nice. Sen. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Hacker! Yeah? You expect me to walk three miles to school in this weather? I love sitting on a nice warm bus with my friends, so I'm with Ian all the way. What do you say to that? Don't side with Ian! What? Ian's never right. Look at him! See? OK, so we need you lot to send an email. We've got one here from Max. Finally, says, don't ban transport because my dog loves the car. All dogs love the car. You just need to use it. Not our dogs. I don't love the car. Well, tell us what you think about travel and email in cbbc at bbc.co.uk. Tell us what you think about travel and remember, it's very much up to you. All right, boys. All right, Dodger. Yeah, yeah. Dodge, mate. What, what are you doing here? Oh, well, I'm here to watch Bear behaving badly, you know. Oh, of course, yeah. You were maybe in the original uh, series of Bear Raven Badly, weren't you, mate? Yeah, yeah, but instead of Nev, I was with this other bear, yeah? Oh, and he behaved really badly. Yeah. Oh. How bad can bad be? Mm. Let's Tell find that. out. Yeah. Next! Right, get in there, you. Get in. Uh, hello, Mr Vet. <sighs> What seems to be the problem? Well, it's my pet bear. He doesn't want to eat anything. He's gone right off his food. Well, let's see what the problem is. Oh, Tommy's fine. Eddie's fine. Hm. Say ah. <coughs> I don't understand it.